Uh, my name is Tasha Hubbard. I'm a Cree and Nakoda from uh, what's now known as Saskatchewan in Canada. And our project is uh, called uh, Waves of Buffalo. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of backstory. Um, so I was adopted out as a baby and grew up on a farm and, uh, you know, struggled to find ways to connect and was able to do so when I was 16. But before that, um, when we used to go on family trips, we'd sometimes go through an area called the Capel Valley. And there I would look at the empty hills. And as a little girl of six years old, I would imagine what those hills would have looked like uh, with uh, the great herds of buffalo uh, that had been eradicated at the end of the 19th century. Uh, I'm a documentary filmmaker, and uh, this is the film I've been wanting to make for um, many years. Um, I did my PhD in the connection between uh, ourselves as, as Indigenous peoples and the buffalo and the relationship of kinship that we hold with them. Many of our tribes speak of them as our relatives, as our grandfathers and grandmothers, as our older brothers and sisters. And so uh, this is a film that's currently in production called Singing Back the Buffalo. And I'm just going to play you a short clip from the, um, this is uh, rough footage that we edited together uh, for the uh, community to watch. So I'm just going to skip ahead. There we go. So that was uh, a herd of historic buffalo being returned back to the Blackfeet tribe in Montana in 2016. And my film is essentially the story of Indigenous peoples uh, trying to bring the buffalo back, not only to their tribal lands, but to their traditional territories as well. Um, and so uh, one of the things that I realized at that shoot was um, because we were able to get quite close through, it's a long story of how we were able to be that close safely. Uh, essentially, they recognized our van and didn't think it was a problem and we were kind of crouched behind the van. They ran past us uh, around 25 feet away and it was only about 60 that came by in that first group, but the ground shook just with the 60. We could feel the reverberations of them uh, as they ran by and I was so struck by that and it made me think from my academic research of the stories of how long it would take a herd, a large herd to pass by and people talked about how it would take three days um, for them to do so. And that's always stayed with me. So when we came together um, 
you know, and, and I'll just a quick slide about their range. Um, people think uh, Buffalo were in very small places, but that's only because of how they got you know, pushed into um, the Great Plains. As you can see, they extended across Turtle Island. So we started to think about, um, uh, and Jason Ryle, who's uh, here with our, our team as a producer on the film, Mary Ev Marchand is our associate producer and production manager. And about a year ago, uh, uh, after conversations with Kat, we started to think, you know, what kinds of things can we do besides the film to expand the notion of what we call Buffalo consciousness? Um, and really it's because they've been gone for so long, because they were went from 30 to 50 million to several hundred, a lot of people are, are disconnected, including our own people. So how can we bring that back together? And um, we started to think about uh, recreating that, that experience uh, of a herd um, passing by. And I will, uh, oh, this is our team, myself, uh, Mary Eve, who I've mentioned, Jason, and our elder advisors, Dr. Leroy Little Bear and Amethyst First Rider, who are both Blackfoot um, from the Kainai tribe and who um, uh, Leroy is also a central part of the film. So at this point, I'll pass it to Jason. Thanks, Tasha. Hi, everyone. So this week has really been tremendous in terms of um, how we're envisioning this project and, and really building off of all the beautiful things that Tasha mentioned. Um, we're very much at the early development stage at this point. But really for us, it was important in the discussions that we've had and everything that we've heard to really go back to the core concept of this idea, which is a land-based installation, um, a durational one that we're looking at for about 72 hours, which is roughly the amount of time in the stories that we heard of uh, how long it takes for a great herd to pass a single point. Um, transdisciplinary, we're looking at all different kinds of technologies currently, which has been wonderful again in the past week to really explore some potentials. Multi-sensory in the sense of, you know, Tasha mentioned the vibrations, but how can we sort of look to recreate smell and touch and other kind of like senses through technology? Oh, uh, I'll just go for another minute or so. Um, and of course the work contributes to Buffalo consciousness as a whole. But for us, it was about like coming back to that core concept and really holding that dear. We heard this great term in the session the past week called minimal viable product, which has been a bit of a mantra for us as we go forward. Um, but look, moving on to the next slide, you know, we're, we're looking at how can we use uh, AR in particular and sort of other technologies perhaps we're not yet aware of to really enhance experience, particularly what happens above the ground and below the ground. The buffalo as a keystone species are so essential to the grasslands ecosystem and all the different beings that live in there. And how can we demonstrate that through technology? Uh, we're also, you know, really considering how can we manifest the buffalo, if we go to the next slide, we're currently thinking perhaps that OLED transparent screens are a way to do this. How can that be scaled? How can that be used for land-based um, for a land-based installation? These are clearly all questions that we have. Um, you know, one of the things that really struck me as someone coming into the Buffalo community um, is this idea that I think people have that the Buffalo, we have this idea of a great herd of Buffalo as always stampeding, certainly I did but really understanding that actually how they move is very different than I think what we've been fed. And they certainly move in different ways and there's a pattern and, and migration and there's a flow, there's sleep cycles. So we're really looking at how can we recreate all these different experiences um, or how can we recreate different experiences for witnessing the passing of a great herd. Um, we're also looking at and contemplating, for example, how can people, if they so choose, camp alongside this virtual herd as it passes by a single spot? How can people who are just coming in at different points along the 72 hours, what are their entry points into the work and how can they experience different things? And what can they really take away to contribute to overall uh, Buffalo consciousness? Next slide. So, well, let's go to the next slide for the research questions. I think we can just end okay. um, with these. So we had, um, a lot of questions, especially in the past week. It's been tremendous to hear everyone speak and all the guest presentations have been so fantastic. But really we're landing on these ones. Like how do we manifest the Buffalo herd over this time? We were thinking initially as having you know, a silhouetted herd, but each of the Buffalo being unique, understanding that's a massive data load. 
but it's really important for us, I think, to sort of structure the herd in a way that it would be in real life, led by a matriarch, um, and then having an individualization in each of the buffaloes. But how can that be presented? And also in terms of thinking of our minimal viable product, what do we have that is in addition to the herd experience and how many is too many? What is kind of the minimal aspect that, we, that we're looking for in terms of the, the adjacent components to have a really clear, cohesive work? 